Hi, I'm Rob, and in this video, we are looking at how different types of inclusion look under magnification. When assessing the clarity in a diamond, the fewer inclusions which are trapped within the structure of the stone, the higher the grade of clarity. But do you need to worry about the different types of inclusions, and does this affect the value and appearance of the diamond? Identifying the exact mineral or impurity that's been trapped within the diamond billions of years ago is almost impossible without laboratory. But by looking at the shape and the structure of the inclusion, specific names can be given to certain types. When you look at a diamond report, you'll often have a clarity characteristics line or an inclusion map with a key. This is telling you what the inclusions look like in your diamond, and in the case of the inclusions map, where they're positioned within the stone on a two-dimensional plane. Under magnification, we can have a look into a diamond and explore the different types of inclusions, including crystals, needles, feathers, and naturals. This diamond has a few different types of inclusions. The first is called a crystal. Some crystals can resemble a diamond within the diamond, and some can resemble bubbles. Some crystals can be so thick that they start to take on a darker or even black appearance. The next inclusion is called a cloud. This is a very broad term as it means there's a collection of very small inclusions, too small to individually classify under magnification, gathered close together. They can though look very different. If the diamond has a large cloud, it may appear to be foggy or hazy in that area, and this can have a significant effect on the appearance of the stone to the naked eye and its value. Next, we have a feather. A feather is probably the easiest type of inclusion to identify and to find. A feather is a crack or a fracture within the stone that has the appearance of a feather. These are caused by immense pressure as the diamond has risen through the Earth's crust. Notice that they're nearly always white and they vary significantly in size and shape. Next is a needle inclusion. This is similar to the crystal inclusion, but as the name suggests, it's needle-like in appearance. This type of inclusion is often white and is very rarely visible to the naked eye. The final type of inclusion in this stone is called an indented natural, and this is where part of the outer surface of the original rough diamond is left on the surface of the polished stone, and that then intrudes into the diamond. Now, although strictly speaking, it's not an inclusion in the regular sense, it is counted as one as it does break the surface of the stone. When it doesn't break the surface, it's simply called a natural, and it's not counted as an inclusion, but rather as a blemish. What's interesting is that you could have an internally flawless diamond, but it might still have a natural mark on the inclusion map. Naturals are very often contained to the girdle of the diamond, as that's the widest part, and the cutter will have tried to use as much of the original rough crystal as possible. There are some other less common types of inclusions, such as twinning wisps. These are formed when a diamond stops growing and then starts growing again, maybe thousands of years later, but in a different direction. This change in the grain leaves a mark in the stone, rather like the crown in your hair or a knot in a piece of wood. These inclusions are very common in heart-shaped stones as the result of a twin diamond, the mackle as it's known, is really suitable for a heart-shaped diamond. When you're buying a diamond, it's really important to look at the details of the inclusions of your stone so you know why your diamond has been given that particular grade of clarity. This is especially important when buying a diamond with a lower clarity grade, as it can significantly affect the appearance and price of a stone. If you have any questions about the clarity characteristics, feel free to get in touch with the team. We would be more than happy to help. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.